Hey guys, so I moved back one of my videos so I can make this video. And I wasn't going to move back the video until I began looking at the information and the data. Essentially, the mana source suggested in a video about Ultimate Masters, where he knows that this card, since it's a box topper, it's one of the first cards that were spoiled, and it was spoiled at this time, recommends buying the card for $15. Luckily, on YouTube, there is time stamped, and this is probably the worst financial advice anyone has given until recently. So, the mana source is really into MTG Finance right now, and on November 6th, when he knew in the video where he's talking about reprints making cars cheaper, he recommends buying it for $15. Now, I'm going to assume that $15 was a near mint copy, and I'm going to assume that he knew that the card was in Ultimate Masters because it's very difficult to make a video about box toppers and not know that this is one of the box toppers. So, where is the card today, and where do I see the card in the future? Let's take a little break on the card and talk about his recent tweets on value. Wait, if this is true, what's the art on MTG Ultimate Master boxes? And if that's if that art is in fact dig through time, why isn't it being used in the card? I'm getting a better picture for Ultimate Masters, but it's still overpriced. So now there is the con conversation about is ultimate masters overpriced and that will be determined by the expected value there's two ways to look at the expected value one way is to look at what the price currently is pre-order and the next way the more logical way is to say all right about 90 percent of these cards are going to drop in price where is it going to be in the future the set is expensive but considering what the word overhyped means, it is not overhyped. The expected value has surpassed $500 now for a box, not counting the promo you get with it. Expensive, yes, but the value is objectively there. It's overhyped because people like you worship any product that Wizards puts out. Okay, so this guy's a little out there, but my point is very simple. To Weds, to promote this product, he's saying it is worth $500 today, expected value. If you were to open a box today, that's what you would get pre-order. It's not that simple. And just like he's telling you to buy Creeping Tar Pits for $15 right before the release on November 6th, when he knows it is in the set. He knows it's in the set. And yet he's telling you to buy for $15 that this is a great buy. Like in the video, he says that this is an amazing buy. TCG player, I mean, just go out there and buy all the creeping tar pits for $15. <laughs> He's assuming that the $500 is going to hold. If this was my first time playing Magic, even I would not assume that. Right? I would be like, oh, so these cards will go down in price, right? If you listen to his financial advice and I've watched all his videos, you will get slaughtered. And the reason that there's either two ways that you can look at it. Either he doesn't really know about MTG Finance very well, and he's telling, and he thinks buying reprinted cards before they get reprinted is a sign of smartness, and he's saying that the expected value of a box is 500. When, and he doesn't know that it's going to go down. Obviously, it's going to go down because at 500, no store would ever sell you a box for under 400, which stores are selling all the time. So um, the other thing that's a little concerning about his MTG Finance advice is a interesting argument between him and James Chilcott. I don't even know if it's an argument, but uh, you see how he views it and how other people view it. And the MTG Finance community is trash. Uh, I have always said that it is trash and they are... The only way, way that anyone makes money from Magic Cards and MTG Finance community is selling articles telling you how to make money from Magic Cards. I'm 100% certain that is the fact that no one makes a six-figure salary, that you can make more money teaching, quote, teaching someone MTG Finance than you can actually doing it. So Creeping Tar Pit 
Right now is $9.95 for near mint, um, free shipping over $25, one out of four. This is the original version. So even if you take the $10, right, you and you drop $5, that's a lot of money. That's as a percentage, the stock lost 33% in two days. Does that sound good to anyone? No. The issue is sometimes when you talk about MTG Finance, you get involved with a lot of interesting personalities who want to push certain uh, views. And if you're sponsored by TCG Player, it is in TCG Player's benefit to try to sell because they take a percentage. They would much rather sell one creeping tar pit for 15 than one creeping tar pit for, as it will later turn on, out seven dollars it's its current price and it is still falling as we speak so uh there is insider trading and the mana source recognizes this and that is the key here is he's not dumb he knows these things are happening and he calls them out rightfully so uh, he knows james literally said it was content creators award per word so he understands the concept that if the content creators have a reprint and then they tell these MTG finance people, then these MTG finance people write articles behind paywalls. And so you ask if they're not making movements on the cards because they don't own the cards like back to basics, what are they doing? They're building up their reputation. They're building themselves up as experts. And then they're going to sell you a subscription of some type. So here, James says, and James has been criticized, and I think rightfully so, on uh, Reddit. He's been chewed to apart. I haven't been chewed apart that bad on Reddit. Nope, I said that content creators have indicated value was forthcoming. This specific card was revealed incidentally in a separate conversation. You guys realize I talk to like 100 plus people a week on these topics, right? So, I mean, if he's talking to 100 plus people, how many of you guys talk to 100 plus people a week at all? Can you name 100 people you talk to in a week? Like, even digitally? That's, and then how many, wow, like the MTG Finance must be like huge if you can talk to 100 plus people every week. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Um, he also has now clarified and said Channel Fireball was not his source. So even Wedge can identify that this is a very bad thing to do. So it's not that Wedge doesn't understand MTG Finance. It's that he understands it when it suits him. When he needs to sell a card for TCG Player, specifically Creeping Tar Pit, he sells it. And here he understands that, yes, there is ability to abuse if content creators tell MTG Finance people a card. And obviously they can sell the card to someone. And there's not a, there is a loss of value. It's, there is damage in this case because people who buy the Back to Basics right before the reprint, if I knew there was a reprint and I showed you the Back to Basics, that is unethical. That's bad. That's very bad because I showed it to you at a higher price than I knew it was worth at the time. So there was, uh, so here is the Creeping Tar Pit. Seven bucks near mint with shipping included. And it is, uh, here's all the near mint ones. Uh, it's a race to the bottom as we speak. So imagine buying a card for $15 and being told on YouTube, this is a good deal. The person knows it's not a good deal because they made a video saying that reprints would lower the card prices, which would include this one. And then it is lost more than half its value overnight. So it wasn't that this card was not, this card was one of the first cards you knew would be reprinted due to the box toppers. And at the time of the video, Wedge knew that this card would be reprinted. And I have shown you evidence that Wedge understands some MTG Finance, the basics of MTG Finance. Yet on November 6, he produces a video telling you, the subscriber, to buy Creeping Tar Pit for $15. This, I, I didn't take the new edition. I took the old edition. The old edition is selling for $7 shipped right now. The, the original edition. The new edition probably sells for 5 bucks, 4 maybe less, depending on how much supply actually exists. But yeah, I mean, why would you tell your subscribers to buy something for 15 that you know is not that? Why would you tell your followers on Twitter the expected value is $500? 
Yes, theoretically, that is correct. But you know, and I know you know, because of your interactions with MTG Finance, because you do have mostly logical statements to make about finance and ethics and things of that nature that I agree with. But you know, and I know you know, that the expected value of 500 is not correct. That is the pre-order price. That is a price that is going to tank into oblivion. If the expected value gets to MSRP, I think that would actually be that would actually be good. Like I, very few sets ever get to MSRP uh, long term. Uh, if the expected value hits 400, I think that's not even going to be. Uh, that's very very good. I, I don't think it's 400. I think it's closer to 300, uh, maybe 290 right now. Uh, from what I believe that the cards will be in the next uh, week or two after release. So in the next month, they should be about 270 290 because that's the price of a box. No store is going to sell you an unopened box when the average price is two times. A store is paying two, 210 for it. Yeah, I mean, if a store buys you for 210 and expected values for 500 why would they sell it to you for 270 or 280 it would make no sense from the storage perspective and no one would be able to open this product. Anyway, bye guys.